Hey guys, Andy here from Mediocre Hobbies, bringing you another paint review. This time it's on Duncan Rhodes' range of miniature paints. I myself personally backed the Kickstarter back when it was originally put up. Um, I went in for the whole hog um, top tier, so I got one of every single paint put, plus a bunch of stretch goal miniatures, paintballs, all sorts of other bits and pieces got thrown in with it. But of course it was the paints that excited me the most. Um, and that's what I'm going to be reviewing here today. I'm going to be using the triad system that these paints are developed around um, to see what results that I can achieve. The sponsor of today's video is Gamak. They are a beautiful 3D printed uh, SDL file supply miniatures company. What that means is you sign up to their Patreon and every month they give you a fantastic selection of both fantasy and science fiction miniatures to add to your tabletop. I'm going to be using one of their miniatures um, to paint on today in the video so you'll get to see one of their models up close and personal and see the beautiful detail. If you want to check out more about the Mac, there's links to their Patreon, Etsy store. And so check those links out in the description below and without further ado, let's get into painting. So one of the things that I was most impressed about by the Gamak miniatures is just how well supported they are and how easily they break away from those supports. Companies who take this much effort and pride in their supports do make our lives a hell of a lot easier when it comes to uh, printing out and getting stuck into their miniatures right away. I think that's a real signature to quality when it comes to uh, STL file manufacturers. Okay, so here is the box set that got sent um, by uh, Mr. Duncan Rhodes, obviously by his Kickstarter. Comes with a few pamphlets describing the range of paints, what they're used for, all those kind of things. Thank yous, the usual bits. One of the things that is important about this is the triad system. I will come back to that in a moment before we actually get stuck into painting. But everything in this does feel high quality. Even the pamphlets, extra bits and pieces they sent us, some models. Um, a Pug miniature, which I'm sure I'll paint up at some stage. Um, a selection of stickers. Always love a good sticker. Yeah, I always get upset when a company sends me something and doesn't and, like give me stickers with it. Don't know why, but that really bothers me. And here is the range of paints. All in beautiful foam inserts. And then all the models um, you get from the Kickstarter are along the bottom. Also inside the box set was this pamphlet which was super cool, the reference chart. It also has a conversion chart, which converts their paints to both Citadel and Army Painter, which I thought was super clever. And then the color wheel on the back actually has the triad system on it. I really like that as another touch. I kept that as a handy guide next to myself in case I mix up the paints. And here's the triad system they were talking about. So it's talking about layering your paints from dark to light. You can easily paint your miniatures quickly and beautifully. So shadow, mid-tone and highlight. Um, and the paints are apparently designed to do just that. So that's what I'm going to go through today. I've got the miniatures based, uh, built up. And I've given them a spray of Chaos Black and then a Zenithal of Grey Seer, just like so all those details scream out. There's two different variations of the Slave Rat here. Okay, I'm going to go for the one that doesn't have the drill hand, the more standard one. I have absolutely no doubt that I will get stuck into painting the other one with Duncan's paints very soon. There's a bunch of more triads that I didn't get to in this video that I'm very curious about. I like my models on more uh, simple bases, but Gamak does uh, supply beautiful, uh, fully detailed bases that goes alongside them. So I'm going to start with Barbarian Brawn, which is the base paint, I guess, for uh, the skin tone. As you can see, I applied it to a wet palette. It's nice and thin, spreads easy enough. And applies quite nicely. It's got a nice, strong tone to it. Not streaky, no brush strokes, really good coverage. So straight out the bat, as soon as I started applying our colors uh, paint with this, um, I thought to myself that was quite nice quality. Especially over such a bright base coat, you would expect some of that to kind of shine through. But uh, I didn't find that at all. I was able to apply a nice uh, even coat of the Barbarian Brawn. I don't know these names off by heart, so if the pot flashes by and I don't remember to look at it, we're going to make a mess of this video, so bear with me. I'm just going to call it the base paint for the skin tone. Uh, I'm working my way up, so. As you can see, I got a nice solid coat of the base skin tone. And this was one coat, not two coats, not three coats, one. 
Dwarven skin is the second paint in the triad. So we're going to layer up all of the skin with this. Straight off the bat, if I wasn't um, going by his triad and I did this, I would have thought that these two colors, it's too big of a jump, that the tones are so far apart that it's not going to look right. I would have gotten nervous and I probably would have backed out. As soon as this system has been put together by people who are a lot smarter than I am when it comes to painting, I'm going to trust the process. I'm just going to stick with my guns, stick with their guns, should I say, stick with the triad system and follow it through. Here I am layering up that mid-tone skin across all of this miniature. I'm really going to take my time. I really want this to look as, as best as it possibly can. Give it as fair outing as I possibly can. And this, just like its previous one, went on in a really nice uh, wood coat. No craziness. This was it with the mid-tone. Already I'm a lot happier with the result. I don't think the, the difference in colors is too stark. But I'm gonna now jump up to the elven skin and that's gonna be the third and final part of the triad. So this is the end highlight. So obviously gonna go a lot lighter with the amount of this that we apply to the skin. Basically just some nice almost like edge highlights, but you can't really do edge highlights on skin. So you're just getting the kind of higher points. And if you like streaky highlights, I don't really know what they're called, etched highlights. But I'm going through and selectively picking the areas that I want to add that final triad color, the extra highlight to, and layering those up. It really does help that the miniature I'm using today is so detailed. Uh, it's very clear as the different muscle groups and everything like that falling through with the skin on the face, his ears, cheeks, eyebrows, nose, falling through with a uh, third highlight. It's very bizarre for me to paint a miniature and not use any sort of shading or glazing. So this is definitely outside my comfort zone. But I must say with the triad of skin tones applied to this miniature, I was really happy with the result. <laughs> like I took a step back and thought to myself, did I paint that? Don't paint like that. Next, we're gonna work up the the skin or the fur. Sorry, so we're gonna go for scorched earth and paint that on the fur. So he's got a, a big pelt of fur across his back, and then he's basically got mutton chops. So he's got a bit of fur sticking out of his cheeks, and so all of those are gonna be done in the scorched brown color. And just like before, it is a dark color going over a a bright uh, spray. Sometimes that can be quite a tricky thing to do as the white will, will constantly want to bleed back through, but I didn't have that. It gave me a nice solid coat of brown. We're gonna move over to the mid-tone brown now. I said mid-tone there because I didn't read the name like I talked about at the beginning of the video, but you can always rewind and check. Uh, but mid-tone brown. And I'm gonna individually layer up all the different strands of fur. Taking my time, being a little bit careful. I, like I said, I do want to put as much effort as I can into this, really give the system um, its fair dues and see what kind of final result we're gonna get at the end of the video. So there's the first uh, highlight, so the second part of the triad. And we're gonna go in for the edge highlight now. And for that, we're gonna use Wasteland Brown. And just like before, we're going in and highlighting but we're going to go for the very edges the very tips of each strand of hair as you can see how quickly i'm moving between strands it does not take long to do this one two three four you know quickly i'm going from each strand it's just a little brush stroke like it's supposed to be a matted lump of fur on the back of a, of a giant rat so you don't need to be extra careful or anything like that Now, skin tones and browns are all well and good, but like I said, I really want to put these paints to the test and give you guys a fair outing. So for his trousers, I decided to be big and brave, and I decided to go for yellow, a color that I would never in a million years have chosen myself because I'm, I like to steer clear of yellow as much as I possibly can. But I think the true test of any paint range is how good their yellows are. So dark sun yellow is the base coat. I won't lie to you, as it is a, a yellow paint, it isn't going to be as strong as the skin or the brown color. 
So this first part of the triad here, this dark sun yellow, I did have to go back over some of the parts for a second coat, but not much of it. Um, it definitely was not a pain to work with. I did enjoy it. Um, and I got a nice solid coat of yellow um, with minimal stress and a minimum effort. You can see that first coat of yellow. Very nice, no streaks, no brush strokes, no patchiness, just a nice solid coat of yellow. So I was quite happy so far. Now it's time to see whether the second and third parts of the triad are gonna make this yellow pop. So Skulker Yellow was the next color used. And as with all the previous parts of the model that I used the uh, triad system on, we're just gonna go for the raised areas, leaving the darkest tone in all of the shadow and the recesses anywhere where light is less likely to get to. And unlike the skin tone where I was worried that there was gonna to be too much of a difference, I was worried that here it was gonna to be too, too less, least of a difference. Hmm, I don't think I said that properly, but uh, I thought the colors were gonna to be too similar and you weren't really gonna notice. But I guess subtlety is kind of key when it comes to yellow. You don't want it to stand out an absolute mile or else it's not really going to work. So this is it with the second coat applied. Like I said, you can't really tell the difference, but it is definitely there. If I had one leg painted and one leg not, put them beside each other, you would definitely notice a huge difference. Yellow Flame was used then as the edge highlight. And this is the one where you do want quite a big jump. You want this to kind of frame all those folds, all the fabric, and add a nice bit of shape to the model. Uh, and as like uh, as you can see, I I think it turned out quite nice. I was quite impressed with the uh, pair of yellow trousers that I managed to pull off for um, for this model. Made my head race. Maybe I'll do a squad of ogres for my ogre army for Age of Sigmar and give them yellow trousers now. Now that this turned out so well. But yeah, take my time getting all the raised areas. Nice highlight. And there we have it, nice yellow trousers. So far this triad system is impressing me more and more. Now it's time for his belt and loin cloth. We're gonna go for a royal cloak. So we're gonna go for a burgundy purpley color for the loin cloth and the belt that goes around the middle section. I think you basically have the gist of what the triad system is like. And I'm gonna show you the belt and the loincloth and then I'm gonna do a quick fire round for all of the kind of nails and bone and teeth and stuff like that. So jumping up to a sword hilt burgundy um, to do the first part of the second part of the triad. I keep gonna say first highlight. But the mid-tone. This is another one where it felt like the jump was a little bit different. Ninjon talked about this in his video that he thinks some of the triads aren't true triads and that the colors don't match each other. And where I have thought about this, like this for instance, I was like these colors don't really match in my head. By the time I've gotten to applying the third part of the triad and the, that part was finished, I was really happy with the result. So glistening gums was the third part. So I don't know whether it's once again about kind of trusting the triad, trusting the color scheme, trusting the tones as they dry, um, or whether I can tell that they're not working, because I think they're working just fine. There is the uh, burgundy applied. Like I said, we're gonna do a quick fire round for all the teeth, gums, and all those bits and pieces. We're gonna start with the dragon fang. Apply that to all the nails, his teeth, He's got some horns coming out of like his forearms and then the, the rope that's uh, over his right hip. We're gonna do that the same kind of, I don't know, whitey color. Skeleton Legion was used as the middle color. Like I said, once again, just jumping in, doing the tips of the nails, kind of midway up to the nail bed and down towards the tip. And then after that, we're going to go to Vampire Fang for the last highlight. So where we were halfway up the nail bed, this is like a quarter of the way up. He's going towards the tips. The tips of all of his fangs. 
on the rope. From here, I'm not going to show you the rest of the triads that I use. I did the silver triad for all the metallic parts. I painted his eyes, um, and that's really about it. I'm just going to do this off camera because all I was trying to do is get across how the triad works and to get a feel for how the Duncan Rhodes paints uh, behave. Suffice to say, I think they're fantastic. I, I think I achieved quite a nice result, something that I wasn't expecting to do. Um, is get a model, a model to this quality, which is a little higher quality than I normally paint to. So I'm very happy. And there we have it, one Rat Ogre fully painted using Duncan Rhodes paints from start to finish and using the triad system. I'm not gonna lie, I didn't really know what to expect from these paints when I first started using them. Uh, I believe uh, Goober Town said it in one of his videos where it's a bizarre product in that it was sold not on the merits of the product, but just on the reputation of the creator. So we bought it because we like Duncan Rhodes and we like to support creators. So I don't know whether I was expecting a high quality paint or a kind of mid-range paint, but I am uh, surprised to say that I think this Rat Ogre may be the best painted miniature that I've ever created, which I was not expecting coming into this from the beginning. Let me know what you guys think of these paints in the comments below. Let me know what you think of the triad system and the models that I painted uh, in the video today. Once again, thank you to our sponsor, Gamma, for supplying me with this miniature. Um, and of course, check out all the links to them below in the description. Thank you guys so much for watching the video. If you enjoyed it, make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. And if you want to help me make bigger and crazier videos, there's links to things like my Patreon below. Thank you guys so much for watching to the end of the video. I'll see you in the next one.